Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Did you ever wonder where they got the current ratings for wires from? You know, this is kind of a mystery. Do you always have to use 10 gauge wire for 30 amps? Why is the current reading often lower for a given conductor size when it is in a multi-conductor cable? Now, I want to help you understand all this in this video, but with that said, in doing the research, I discovered that this whole topic gets really complicated really fast. In other words, there is the possibility of lots of high-end math. Thus, I'm going to explain the concepts, which will help you understand how to apply the values you acquire from the established tables and data sheets. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's dive into the basics of conductor current ratings. So, what is the number one factor which contributes to the current rating of any particular conductor? Well, the answer is quite simple. Temperature rise. So, let's just think about this for a moment. Every wire has some resistance. And we can see this on the wire tables in the form of the ohms per 1000 feet or ohms per kilometer values. Thus, every wire is a resistor. Now, granted, it's a low value resistor, but it's a resistor nonetheless. So, what happens to a resistor as we run current through it? Ohm's law applies, which tells us that the power dissipated in heat equals the current through it squared times the resistance of it. So for a 10 ohm resistor with one amp running through it, we can anticipate that it will have to dissipate one squared times 10 or 10 watts of power in the form of heat. The actual temperature rise of this resistor will depend on its environment. With this understanding under our belt, let's think about the one meter long, 30 gauge wire just hanging out there by itself with two amps running through it. According to the wire table I have here, a 30 gauge wire has a resistivity of 338.496 ohms per kilometer. Our one meter wire will have 0.338 496 ohms of resistance. So now we know the resistance of our wire and the current running through it. We can calculate the power being dissipated by it in heat in watts. We have power is equal to 2 squared times 0 0.338496 or about 1.35 watts. And like the resistor, this wire is going to begin heating. How much it heats will depend on its environment. So let's talk about environment for a moment. Well, there are two ways that we get rid of heat from a wire or component. I'm going to begin with thinking about radiated heat. So what sorts of things might affect how hot an object will get with a given amount of heat being dissipated by it? Okay, now think about a house. It stays a lot warmer with a given amount of heat if it is well insulated. So let's put our heat producing conductor into its house, so to speak. How much temperature rise there will be with a current carrying conductor will depend on the type and thickness of the electrical insulation on the conductor. This is because the electrical insulation also acts as thermal insulation preventing the wire from effectively radiating heat. How much temperature rise a given insulated wire can tolerate is dependent on the type of material used to insulate the wire. So let's take this one more step. What about a multi-conductor cable? Now we have a wire which has its own electrical and therefore thermal insulation. It is now crammed together with other heat generating conductors. And to make matters worse, 
it's also encapsulated in the overall sheath of the cable itself. This means that it has the potential of getting a lot hotter with this same amount of current passing through it than it would if it was just hanging out by itself in the air. But this isn't the only way wires get rid of heat. Well, the wire table that I have specifies a very different current rating for chassis wiring as opposed to transmission. I mean, take a look here. Here is a 20 gauge wire. It is rated at 1.5 amps for power transmission and 11 amps for chassis wiring. Well, unfortunately, my table does not specify what is considered chassis wiring. But why would it have a different current rating? Well, part of the answer is conducted heat and its cousin, length. Now, I've already explained that heat produced by a current running through a wire travels away from this wire by radiating it out into the air around it. Wire used in power transmission is often bundled together with other wires or maybe running through a conduit. Thus, it cannot radiate heat as effectively. But a current carrying conductor also conducts this heat through itself toward the ends where it is connected to the circuitry. If a wire is long, the amount of heat that can be conducted away effectively is minimal. Thus, the cooling of the wire depends primarily on radiating the heat into the environment around it. With shorter lengths, the heat conducted toward the ends of the wire becomes more and more of a factor, allowing higher currents to be used and still maintain the same temperature rise. But there are other considerations in choosing your wire. There are also other cooling factors like airflow, insulation thickness, is it contained within a multi-conductor cable or a bundle of wires or maybe in a conduit? And then there is the type of insulation. Because the current reading of the wire is a function of the temperature rise, it also means that the kind and thickness of the insulation affect it too. Thicker insulation reduces the cooling factor by radiation. The temperature tolerance of the material determines how much temperature rise it can handle and still be viable as an electrical insulator. Another consideration is power or voltage loss. Remember, a wire is just a low value resistor you are putting between your power or signal source and the load. Too much resistance yields what I call squishy voltages. As the load increases, the voltage at the load end of the wire decreases due to the voltage drop of the wire itself. So the question is, how much variation in voltage at the load can you tolerate? Remember, voltage drop per foot or per meter is unaffected by the overall length of the wire. Lastly, every wire is not only a resistor but it is also an inductor. The smaller the conductor, the more inductance per unit length. Inductance resists changes in current. Thus, for pulse applications, use larger conductors to reduce the inductance of the wires, providing better instantaneous current supply to the circuit. Well, in the end, Trust the current reading as specified on the data sheet for a given wire or cable. While the generic wire tables are a helpful guide, the real authoritative guide is the data sheet for the specific wire or cable that you're using. But even there, remember these are maximums. And like so many things in electronics, it's always best to stay away from the maximums. I mean, why walk on the very edge of the cliff? If you don't want to fall, stay away from the edge. The same applies to the maximum readings of anything. So there you go. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, to loots.